Arctodus simus, the giant short-faced bear. One of the most dangerous extinct animals was the giant short-faced bear, a formidable predator of North and South America. It weighed more than 1,500 pounds and stood up to 12 feet tall on its hind legs. The giant bear's massive size and powerful jaw made it one of the most dangerous predators of its time, capable of taking down large prey and competing with other apex predators. Experts say the animal could probably run faster than 40 miles per hour to catch its meals. That's similar to the top speed of present-day racehorses, meaning human beings would have had no chance at escaping this prehistoric nightmare. Forus racos. The terror bird paleontologists call the extinct birds of the Forus racidae family in South America the terror birds ranking them among the planet's scariest extinct animals. With powerful beaks and sharp teeth capable of inflicting deadly wounds, these creatures were natural predators, preying on other animals and almost certainly instilling fear in the earliest aboriginal people who might have encountered them. Imagine a 10-foot-tall forest rakos using its huge beak like a hatchet against its victims. The terror birds were mostly flightless, but they made up for their lack of flight with the ability to run up to 60 miles per hour. For reference, ostriches, which are the tallest living birds, max out at 9 feet tall and can sprint up to 43 miles per hour. Titanoboa serejonensis, the giant snake. Among the largest snakes to have ever existed, Titanoboa serejonensis is a prehistoric animal straight out of your darkest nightmares. It belongs to the Boidy family of animals, which evolved in North and South America during the Cretaceous period. This giant snake could reach lengths of up to 42 feet, nearly 13 meters, and weighed over a ton, more than 1,000 kilograms. For reference, even the longest anacondas ever discovered have never surpassed 30 feet, 9 meters. The mouth and head alone of the extinct animal may have been longer than 2 feet. Titanoboa likely lived in or very near the water, where these extinct animals could ambush and kill other species. Their huge size and powerful bite force allowed them to constrict and consume large prey, making them one of the most dangerous extinct animals of the prehistoric world. Smilodon fatalis, the saber-toothed tiger. Saber-toothed cats, including the famous saber-toothed tiger, were powerful predators that lived during the early Miocene and Pliocene epochs, with intimidating incisors measuring about 1 foot, 0.3 meters, and a powerful jaw. These creatures were adept at taking down large animals. Weighing up to 750 pounds, 340 kilograms, this extinct animal was a superior hunter, electing to catch its prey off guard versus running it down. While it held the prey with its front legs, it used its sharp teeth to slash the animal's throat or stomach. Then it left its prey to bleed out, returning to feast once the animal was dead. Otodus megalodon, the giant shark. When thinking about the most dangerous extinct animals, you can't overlook the megalodon, a giant shark that could reach lengths of up to 60 feet, 18 meters, making it a truly formidable predator of the oceans. This prehistoric shark, which swam in the same waters as large whales, possessed the most powerful bite force of any marine creature in history. Paleontologists have found its teeth marks on fossilized whale bones, suggesting megalodon ate the faces off prehistoric sperm whales. And megalodons weren't picky eaters. These distant relatives of today's great white shark also preyed on baleen whales. Deinosuchus rugosus, the terrible crocodile, easily earns a place on this list of the most dangerous extinct animals. It lived during the Cretaceous period and was once the largest predator in North America. Deinosuchus grew up to 40 feet, 12 meters long, and could range from 13,000 to 15,000 pounds, roughly 6.5 to 7.5 tons, or about the same weight as a fully grown Trianosaurus rex, another scary extinct animal. Although the timelines for these two extinct species did not overlap, with an incredibly powerful bite force, the Dinosuchus was capable of crushing the bones of even the biggest dinosaurs. It also likely fed on prehistoric birds, turtles, fish, and other extinct animals. Arthropleura armata, the gigantic millipede. In the Carboniferous period, the Arthropleura, a gargantuan millipede, roamed the earth with between 32 and 64 jointed legs. This terrifying creature is the largest land invertebrate ever discovered, capable of growing up to 8 feet, 2.4 meters long and nearly 2 feet, 0.6 meters wide, with articulated armored plates covering its entire body. It may have weighed close to 110 pounds, 50 kilograms. Although Arthropleura likely fed primarily on plant matter and maybe smaller in vertebrates, its massive size and intimidating appearance make it one of the scariest extinct animals to have ever existed.
Glyptodon were enormous armored mammals that became extinct around 10,000 years ago. Roughly the size of a VW beetle, the Glyptodon was well armored against attacks from predators. A relative of modern-day armadillos, they were unable to pull their head into their shell like turtles and relied on thick skull armor and sharp spikes for defense. Their thick tail could be used as a club and featured a bony knob at the end. They ate just about anything, from plants to insects to carrion. Argentavis. The Argentavis has the distinction of being the largest flying bird ever discovered. The massive bird could grow to be 24 feet, wingtip to wingtip, twice the size of the Andean condor, which is one of the largest birds in the world today. Argentavis are thought to have relied on thermal currents to stay aloft. The creature's huge size would have made takeoffs more difficult, and they likely made their homes in the mountains, where they could use mountain slopes and headwinds to aid in launching. Though it would certainly be frightening to find yourself under a soaring Argentavis, the living wouldn't have too much to worry about. It's believed that the bird was a scavenger that preferred its meals already dead. Scavenging, as opposed to hunting, would have been a way for the Argentavis to conserve the energy required to move its massive body. When it comes to reproduction, it's believed that the Argentavis likely raised few young for long periods. Staying with the parent longer would increase the offspring's chances of survival. Paraceratherium the Paraceratherium were enormous beasts that lived around 25 million years ago in what is now Asia. Standing nearly 20 feet tall at the shoulder, the Paraceratherium remained the largest known species of mammal to walk the Earth. Our fossil record of the Paraceratherium is relatively sparse, so it's hard to say what they looked like exactly. But the general scientific consensus is that they had long, muscular necks and heads not unlike a hornless rhinoceros. Their long reach allowed them to graze on tall trees, which means they likely occupied an ecological niche similar to that of a giraffe, with little competition from smaller, shorter creatures. It's believed that Paraceratherium had muscular lips that enabled it to grip and manipulate food before eating it. Megalania, whose name translates to ancient great roamer, was a giant carnivorous goanna that may have grown up to 23 feet long and weighed more than 4,000 pounds. This monitor lizard inhabited the grasslands, open forests, and woodlands of eastern Australia during the Pleistocene era, and likely fed on other medium and large animals, including mammals, snakes, birds, and other lizards, using its serrated blade-like teeth. It may have been venomous, and if it was, it would be the largest known venomous vertebrate. Ground Sloth The ground sloth is one of the few land mammals that could give the Paraceratherium a run for their money. Weighing up to 9,000 pounds and stretching 20 feet in length, the ground sloth ambled around the woodlands and grasslands of South America as recently as 10,000 years ago, supporting itself by eating grasses, shrubs, and leaves. The ground sloth had the misfortune of overlapping with humanity's reign and was likely hunted to extinction as we trickled down from North America. Because ground-dwelling sloths had no previous experience with human predators, they likely would have been easy prey for prehistoric hunters. The Deodon, like the Megalodon, is worthy of a healthy dose of fear. They were enormous hulking towers of brawny pig that lived around 20 million years ago in North America. They could grow to be six feet high at the shoulder and weigh thousands of pounds. It's telling of their dominance of the food web that they belong to a family of animals nicknamed Hell Pig and Terminator Pig. Fossilized remains of their teeth suggest they were omnivorous, dining both on animals and plants. It's believed that they operated as carrion scavengers, tracking other predators just to steal their kills. It likely had a finely tuned sense of smell to detect where its next meal could be found. Giant Otter Around six million years ago, giant otters, Siamogaeli melilutra, the size of wolves and weighing up to 110 pounds, twice the size of modern-day otters, lived in what is now Asia. In 2017, American paleontologists excavating an ancient lake bed in the Yunnan province in southwestern China found a complete skull, jawbone, and teeth. The teeth showed the furry creatures lived on extra-large shellfish and mollusks, which it cracked open with a powerful jaw. Why it was so large, though, remains a mystery. Typically, animals get bigger to subdue their prey, but this giant otter only ate small creatures like mollusks, which would not have needed to be physically overpowered. Giant beavers, driven to extinction around 11,000 years ago, were plus-sized versions of today's furry little landscape engineers and the largest rodent of the last ice age. They could grow more than 8 feet in length and tip the scales at 200 pounds. Think of a beaver the size of a black bear. That's a big animal. 
Evidence suggests that giant beavers built lodges just like modern-day beavers. They were mostly commonly found in the area south of the Great Lakes in central North America, in what's now Illinois and Indiana, though fossils have been found as far away as Florida, Toronto, and the Yukon.